Hi guys! DeepTech 3D has recently released their new 3D scanners on Kickstarter, the new Star X and Star X Pro. These are blue laser scanners and in this video we will test the Star X model. You want to know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, as we mentioned in the beginning, DeepTech released two new handheld scanners, the Star X and Star X Pro. And in this video, we will test the Star X. The manufacturer promises a handheld blue laser 3D scanner with only 890 grams and industrial grade specs at a lower price. The Star X is equipped with blue lasers and is capable of emitting three different patterns 14 crossed laser lines, 7 fine parallel lines, or a single laser line. The maximum scanning range is 300 by 350 mm, and the manufacturer states that it can reach 20 microns of accuracy. This model is also equipped with advanced cameras for fast speed and high accuracy. They promise scans up to 1.8 million points per second and from small objects up to big structures. The software for capturing and processing the data is also included, and it's called 3D Matrix. Ok, now let's start with the unboxing. Inside this cardboard box, we have a transport case, an envelope, and a yellow plastic piece. Inside the envelope, we have details about the contents, instructions on how to connect and set up the scanner, and some scanning tips. The yellow plastic piece is a scan test model and that's what we will use for the first test. The scanner and all the accessories come inside this nice transport case. Right at the top, we have the calibration board. Then we have a USB dongle and a USB flash drive. Then we have a few cables, a bag with some markers, a USB extension cable, a power supply and the power cord. And finally, the scanner itself. The USB dongle is this one. With it is a tag with the scanner's serial number. The software will not work without this dongle connected, so make sure you keep it always close by. Inside the flash drive is the software to work with the scanner and instructions. The power supply to power the scanner is this one is a 20 volt and 3.25 amp model. The extension cable is this one and can be used if we need to scan big parts that will require moving away from the computer. To calibrate the scanner, we need to use this. It has some markers on the outside and some more on the inside. The scanner comes inside a plastic bag with seals on it. At the front are the light rings, lenses and laser outputs. And at the back are five buttons to control a few settings while scanning. The cable that comes from the scanner has two connectors, one for power and the other to connect to the computer. Unlike other scanners with different technologies, the Star X always needs to have markers to be able to scan. The markers are these small stickers which have a specific diameter and are highly reflectable. They will help the scanner to detect the area to scan. There is a rule that we need to follow for the markers placement. They need to be no more than 100 mm apart and placed randomly on the area. If the model that we will scan is small enough, we can place markers around the model instead of on it. The software, which will be upgraded soon, was on the flash drive and we didn't need to install it. 
We only had to copy it to our computer and run it. However, before we could start the software, we had to disable our antivirus software because it was sending all the executable files to quarantine. This is one item we hope it will be fixed on the next software version. Anyway, once we start the software, we first need to enter the key and license so we can gain access to the software and use the scanner. Don't forget to always have the dongle connected when using the software, otherwise it will not work. There are a few options right on the initial screen, but before we can start scanning, we need to calibrate the scanner. To calibrate, we need to use the calibration board and follow the instructions on the screen. The procedure is simple. We need to move the scanner and match its position, which is represented in black on the software, with the green one. We have to do it several times until we complete the seven steps. After these seven steps, we have a few more to go through, where we need to align the green surface that is being scanned with the blue square. Although it's a simple procedure, it's time-consuming and sometimes it's hard to match the scanner's position with what's required. The scanner only weighs 190 grams, but halfway through the calibration, it starts to feel much more than that. Once the calibration is done, we can calibrate the light. This is not mandatory, but it will help to make the scanning process a bit easier. For our first test, we used the yellow piece that came with the scanner. When starting the scan, the scanner will only turn the laser lines on when it detects the markers. During the scanning process, we have several settings we can choose on the right side. The most important ones are the scan modes, which we can choose between cross lines, parallel lines or single line, and the laser bright and fill light. If you run the light calibration before the scan, the fill light should be set to the correct value. These settings can also be changed while scanning. When scanning, one might think that this is the normal orientation, but no. The normal orientation that we get from the screen is on its side. It's not so intuitive and makes the wrist and hand feel tired faster while handling it this way. Once the scan is complete, you can proceed with the data processing. For this step, you can delete all the data points that don't belong to the model. The software allows different ways to clean the model and delete the data that you don't want to include. You can also choose to fill the spots where the markers were detected. And if there are gaps on the model, you can fill these as well. Once completed, we can export the scan in STL format. For the next tests, we scanned a few small models like this mechanical part from a 3D printer and a couple of parts from a car trunk release button. Scanning the 3D printer piece was not as easy as the yellow corn. Some areas were difficult to capture and some were not captured at all. It was expected that the laser lines would reach these areas right here, but were not captured at all. We even tried using scanning spray, but somehow the result was even worse. Parts like this trunk button worked, but up to a certain point. The bigger areas were captured, but the smaller ones lacked detail. 
for the second one, it was easier to scan even though it was a dark piece. The scanner was able to capture the entire piece and this is the result. In this case, the settings we used for post-processing made the model nice and smooth but less accurate. For bigger models, we tested our big cooling unit. We placed markers all over the unit, and since it has black and white surfaces, it's perfect to test the scanner. Because we have parts with both dark and light surfaces, we need to change the light settings during the scanning process. For this, we can use the computer or the buttons on the scanner. With this model, we noticed that the big areas were captured nicely, but it had a bit of hard time to capture the more complex areas, such as the wrapped cord at the back. The scanner also had some issues capturing the areas in between the front grille. Although we can see the laser lines going all the way in, it was unable to capture these details easily. Our final test was to scan the front bumper of a car. Once again, we had to place a lot of markers on the car so that the scanner could capture. We did several passes and this is the result. Overall, it was able to capture the bumper very nicely. However, some areas like this part on the hood, it didn't capture as well even though we passed the lines several times. So, in conclusion, we think this scanner was not designed for small detail models. Although the yellow test model was scanned perfectly, we cannot take it into account, because, as we all know, this test piece was designed specifically as a demo piece and to be easy to scan. Having said that, and according to the manufacturer, this scanner is better for bigger models such as car parts. Also, the scanning process is not rocket science. There are a few tricks that need to be done to get results that the manufacturer promises. The more data you capture, the better result you'll get, so it's best to swipe the surface a few times. There are several settings that you need to adjust to get the results you need. In some cases, you might need more accuracy and therefore you will lose smoothness. Or, in other hand, you might prefer a smooth scan and with that lose some accuracy. The same values will not work for most cases, so you need to understand what these values mean to get the most from your scanner. One advantage is that with this scanner we were able to capture the dark surfaces as easy as the lighter ones. One other advantage is that it's really fast while scanning. It can capture the data really fast, which is very important. Although it's stated on the specs that the lasers are eye safe, the manufacturer does not recommend to scan faces with the eyes open. As for a final note, this scanner is not for a normal user. A person with scanning knowledge or someone that can invest in learning all about the software and scanning techniques are the ones that will be getting the most of the scanner. One thing you need to keep in mind is the minimum computer requirements to be able to work with the software. If your computer does not have at least 64 GB of memory or equipped with an RTX graphic card, it will not work. At the moment of this video, the Kickstarter campaign has already ended. And on the manufacturer's website, there is no information about the scanner yet. But we have been told that it will be added soon. As for the price, and for the Star X, the value will be set at 4000 US dollars. And that's it you guys, we hope this video was useful. Thanks for watching, we will see you guys next time. Bye!